Hello and welcome to the workshop vlog. I have had an absolutely manic day today making loads of wood turners blend. I've been sorting out projects, getting Christmas stuff ready, ready to start turning. So we've got lots to talk about so let's get started. Firstly, if you haven't seen the video for making this lathe cart, I'd really appreciate it if you'd go and check that out. This has probably been one of my favourite projects I've ever made, purely because it is so functional and useful. It has these cupboards at the bottom where I can store all of my sort of accessories, so things like wood turns blend, um, oil finishes, bits of paper towel, drill chucks, all that kind of stuff go in there. Up here we've got spindle blanks on the left and bowl blanks on the right. Lathe sits on top, there's no room for other tools up here, obviously you could fit a few turning tools on the top. But the whole point is, I didn't want to have to use a massive workbench to put a lathe on because it just takes up too much space. It's not actually particularly functional having a massive workbench to use on the lathe. Having a small workbench which is portable and easy to use is much better. So I'll quickly show you around this workbench. And as I said, if you haven't seen that video, have a look in the description and I'll leave a link in it there. So let's have a look at this. So as I said, we've got cupboards down here. And this one has things like, as I said, drill chucks, drill bits, sandpaper, so I've got some drill bits there, some gloves for taking um, the faceplate off, sandpaper, the drill chucks just there, this is the drill chuck I use for the lathe, um, got some wood turners blend in here, got pen kits in here, we've got all kinds of stuff in there, and then down here, hopefully you can see that if I move it around a little bit, just here I keep all my turning tools, these are the ones I don't tend to use as often, and then if we have a look in the other cupboard, I'll show you what I have in there. So in here, I just have my aprons at the moment. I haven't really put anything in there yet, but eventually there will. And at the back, I've got a roll of velvet, which I'll be using for some bowls. In here, we've got dies and finishes and things like that. Um, mostly Libron concentrated wood dies. In here, we've got more pen blank kits and... Um, pen kits, so I've got walnut in here, I've got some panga panga as you can hopefully see if you look through there, you can see we've got a range of woods so there are all my pen blanks, I've got about 3, 6, 10, maybe about 20 yeah, about 20 pen blanks in there, so plenty to do projects with and they just live in that little cupboard there so these doors can then be shut I would have rather have used a bit of thicker plywood for this, but I didn't have any, so I may do with the 5mm thick stuff. Up here we've got spindle blanks, so this is just all of my spindles, so wild mango, ash, got some walnuts, some panga panga, a bit of pine, a bit of umbilo, um, some zebrano, and uh, yeah, I think that's about it in terms of species down there. Um, we've also got beech, oak. Um, and maybe a piece of cherry, which are just at the very back, you might be able to make them out there. Then here, we have bowl blanks, excuse the fireworks. So we've got beech in here, zebrano, walnut, and sapili, and things like that. And then on the side, we keep all my PPE equipment, and these dust sheets currently stop all of the dust getting all around the workshop. This workbench still needs a lot of work on it at the moment, I'm working on restoring this currently. I'm getting there with it, it just needs a little bit more work. So some more sanding and some fixing on the leg. This workbench needs organising. Um, that one, I now have all of my wood on the very top, which I think is really useful. And you can probably make out those spindle legs from the chair up there. First aid kit, bits like that. This workbench needs tidying. This is all of my offcuts. Some of them can be used, some of them will be firewood and things like that. But we'll see what happens with that. The next project will be making a sanding organiser for that sander up there. And the bench grinder there. And I'll be using some OSB, which is here, to make that from. So I'll talk about that now quickly. I really want an organised place where I can have my sander and bench grinder, because I sort of count those as the same sort of tools. They both do sanding and grinding and things like that. So I think they're quite a logical thing to have together. So I want to build a cart using this bit of OSB. I've got two of these. And some CLS timber, which I've got at the very back of the workshop. And essentially it will be very similar to this, but it will be much narrower and smaller. And it will also have different storage features. So this will probably focus more on like organised for hanging belts, sanding belts on the outside and things, because obviously I want to keep a plentiful stock of those. I want to be able to hold all of my sanding discs, sanding sheets, sandpaper, everything to do with sanding I want to be able to put in that cupboard. So the way I'm going to do that is by having it quite tall. I'm probably having shelves, I haven't quite decided yet, I'm either going to have shelves or one big opening cupboard 
and at the moment I'm kind of steering towards having two, sorry, two opening cupboards with one side for all of my like random orbit sanding sheets and hand sandpaper and the other side for the big machinery sanding side of things. So I've been working really hard at the moment producing some wood tennis blend so I've got a bit of a bigger stock at the moment because I've had quite a few orders come through in the past few days and I just want to ensure I have enough stock. So if you're interested in purchasing any of that, I'll leave a link down below. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a project video this week. I just simply haven't had the time to actually film one. I've been so busy the past two days just getting things sorted, making things, doing things, designing things. Busy life. Um, in terms of things that's going to happen in the next few months, I am launching a competition which there will be a prize for. So the competition will be oriented around making a woodworking box. So it could be dovetailed, it could be finger joint, it could be mitre joint, it could be butt jointed, um, it could be hinged lid, it could be a veneered top lid, whatever it needs to be, some sort of box, it doesn't have to be made out of wood, it could be made out of metal or whatever. But essentially, you'll have to send in your box that you've made, either by Instagram or by email, which you can email me at designandmakeyt at gmail.com, and the winner will be picked by myself, my friend, and probably another person as well, just to eliminate any bias. And essentially what will happen is the winner will receive a designer mix sticker, a wood tennis blend sticker, and a £10 Axminster voucher. Which I think is pretty decent, um, and I think that would be a really fun competition. So, if you want to start making it now, you can, but there will be a video going live. It might be this week, actually. So there, might, there won't be a project video this week, but there will probably be an announcement video about this sort of um, competition. The competition deadline will probably be the 16th of December. Um, which will allow me to hopefully send, mark them, I guess judge them, whatever you want to call it, um, by the 17th, and I can send out the prize on the 18th of December, which hopefully should get it in time for Christmas, if not a bit after Christmas. I think that's a pretty good competition, though, and I think it'll be pretty fun. I'm really excited to see what you guys design and make on it. Um, I think there's a lot of sort of scope to do some really cool things. You could even make it out of plywood or whatever if you wanted to, and then you could paint it. There's literally unlimited creativity with this project. I'll put out a few guidelines in terms of like some sort of ideas that you could do. So I'll show you a few examples of some boxes I've made. If anyone needs any sort of like inspiration, I'll put some boxes that I've made. I'll put some boxes that other people have made so that you guys can see some sort of examples of what you could make so that you have some ideas. But the whole point is it's meant to showcase people's creativity and essentially what will happen is everyone who enters the competition, I will then showcase their videos and sort of their channel or Instagram page on my channel so that it helps all of these smaller content creators grow or bigger if you're a bigger channel and you're feeling like you want to enter. I hope you guys are excited though by that little woodworking, metalworking, whatever kind of competition. I think it'd be quite fun but essentially the main theme of it is box making because I think most woodworkers can make a box and I think it's a really good way to build your skills. I really enjoy making boxes and I haven't found a woodworker who doesn't like making boxes yet. So that's the competition and I really hope you're excited for that. It's been quite a lot of planning going into things like that because obviously I've got to make sure I can get all these things done in time. I'm a busy person, I need to get all these things designed. And then I'm also going to be making Christmas decorations, which are these Christmas trees. Excuse the fireworks, they've been going all evening. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be making Christmas tree decorations, which I can't wait to do. I'm going to be starting those next Saturday, or maybe even Friday night. And I just need to order a parting tool. I can't wait to get making those Christmas trees and I think it's going to be a really good learning experience. So essentially I'm going to make them out of all the different woods. I've got purple heart, babinga, wild mango, ash, oak, pine, beech, uh, wild mango, I can't remember what I've said already. Um, but essentially I'm just going to go and make 30 Christmas trees, probably something like that, and every person in my family and some friends will get given a Christmas tree decoration and some people get boxes and things. I don't know what exactly I'm going to be doing but I want to make loads of Christmas trees so I think they're a really nice gift and there's something that can be used year after year after year because they can be hung on the Christmas tree, they could go on a mantelpiece or something like that and I also want to make a sort of like a 10 Christmas project sort of video so it'd be things like making some boxes, probably making a Christmas tree would be included in that um, I do also want to try a few other things, I do really want to do that sled at Christmas time I'm really really hoping I can get it done I'm a little bit sort of sceptical that I'm going to actually be able to do it because of the bending of the metal which might require me bend by it. Might require me buying a metal roller which I don't really want to have to do. Although I do know someone who might be able to help me with the metal aspect of things and the metal rolling. So we're going to have to have a look at that but 
I think I can probably do the sled. It might not be a traditional Davos, slow, Davos style sled. It might be more of a lower profile, sort of lower to the ground sled, as I think that'd be better for going down fast and stuff down the hills. And I really, really am excited to be building this sled. I'm gonna build it out of oak. I'm pretty certain it's gonna happen. I would say I'm about 90% sure that I'm going to be able to accomplish it and build it. It just depends on things like timelines with other projects. Obviously, Christmas decorations have got to come first and things like that. But the sled is something, a personal project that I really want to do, and I really, really am excited to try and build that. Um, this lathe is going to have a few upgrades made to it in sort of a few months' time, so I'm going to be getting a brand new tool rest, a much longer one for spindles. This will be absolutely fine for the Christmas trees. Luckily, this is a 150mm tool rest. The thing I don't like about this, if I pull it out of the banjo, is that it's actually cast iron, but if you look here, you can probably just make out these sort of... Um, I guess you could call it pitting and stuff in the cast iron and I'm not a huge fan sometimes of the cast iron, it does require a bit of maintenance because you've got to file it down so that you don't have burrs that catch the tool and sort of push the tool and then you catch it against the surface of the wood which isn't great. I might be buying a robust tool rest because this is quite small and I do find when turning balls I wouldn't mind, I would mind, bleh, I would like something that helps me glide along it a bit better because this is also very rough against your hand and it's nice to be able to have something smooth so that when you're doing repetition sort of pieces and I guess batch turning things you want something that's a lot nicer to hold so I'm probably going to be upgrading that the other things I want to get are a bigger faceplate so I'm going to get a 100mm one this is a 75mm faceplate but I would really like to get a 100mm faceplate so that would be an upgrade I make as well um, I also want to get a pen mandrel I want to try and turn pens in a new year so I'm going to be getting a um, Morse Taper 2 pen mandrel. I think I'm going to go for the more deluxe option, which I think is about £50, because I think that's something nice, and it's always nice to treat yourself to a new tool or a little gadget. Obviously, this whole workshop is going to have quite an upgrade to it. Um, we are considering putting... Um, there used to be a door into the house, just there, that grey door just about there, um, but actually they boarded up, so we're considering knocking back through that so we can actually have a doorway into the house because it would save me the money on having to put the door, um, sort of like the long wall door across here to get out to the garage, out to the front, sorry. Um, and I would much rather have a door into the house if that's possible, but my mum and dad suggested it to me and I thought it's quite a good idea. We'll see if that happens, it might not happen because I don't know how feasible that's going to be and obviously it requires quite a lot of changing to structures and things, but because there was originally a door there it won't affect the structure of the house or anything like that, so in theory we should be able to do it. All of the walls will be lined. I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen with that yet, but it'll probably be, if we don't line all of them, I'll definitely have one lined in wood that I can hang all of my tools off of and make a tool wall and sort of a presentation wall, because I really want it to have a studio feel on one little section, so I have my really nice workbench in front of it, and this one I'm restoring, and then I can have like a really nice sort of backdrop with my designer make um, canvas print that I purchased and a wood turners blend canvas print so that it really showcases my brand and I think having the merchandise and things and then the workbench and like a feature wall would really really help and really look awesome in these videos. I also want to add some wood turners blend stuff onto like I want a wood turners blend showcase wall sort of thing so maybe on a shelf I might have like a wood turners blend poster with a bar of wood turners blend and a bowl that's coloured um, that's finished with wood turners blend that's what I'm looking for I did try and I might try and make a paste wax version of wood turners blend with some bored linseed oil and um, an actual bar of wood turners blend melted down into it, just for myself, not to sell or anything, because I would quite like to have a paste wax version of it. I also use wood turners blend on my planes, on the bottom of the planes, as it really helps glide them across a piece of wood. You can use any sort of wax really, but I find wood turners blend works really well, and it also has quite a nice smell. So when you're using the planes, sometimes you can smell it against the surface of the wood which I think is quite nice. Um, it's got a subtle lemon scent to it, which is quite a nice smell. It's got a nice aroma to it. But I tend to use wood turners blend on the sole of my planes, as it's not got anything that would damage it, and I've been using wood turners blend on the bottom of my planes ever since I created wood turners blend, and it seems to work really well. I only have a block plane at the moment, but I might try and get a number four plane very, very soon. I'm hoping I could maybe get one by January or something like that. And I also would like to get a good chisel set because I really want to try some dovetails and things and I need some better quality hand tools and things for doing stuff like that. So I'm going to have a look at investing in that. I really hope you've enjoyed this workshop vlog. If you have any questions, as always, pop them down in the comments section below. If you haven't seen this lathe cart build video yet, check the description for that. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video.